It's Veterans Day. Observed as a national holiday for over 80 years, it's designed to pause, remember, and thank our men and women of the U.S. Armed Services who have sacrificed their comfort, their incomes, and often their lives so that the ideals of this governmental experiment could continue. Originally called Armistice Day after the First World War, and it's still called that in the U.K., Congress made it an official holiday in 1938. Poppies were traditionally worn since they were ever-present on the Western Front in Europe during the World War. It wasn't called the First World War originally, of course. You can still see purists wear poppies over this remembrance. I do not come from a long line of military service. My uncle, Donald Vreeland, is the most recent who served an entire 22-year Army career and then was employed by the National Security Agency for another 23 years after that. He and his wife, my mom's sister, are interred at Arlington Cemetery, and I check in every time I visit my daughter and her family in Virginia. The other veteran in my family is Sergeant Lucius W. Barber, Company D, 15th Illinois Volunteers, a Union Army unit out of Marengo, Illinois. Lucius traveled over 10,000 miles, mostly on foot, during the American Civil Conflict. I have his field notes and diaries that he kept during his service. A more patriotic and eloquent soldier never served General Grant than our Uncle Lute. My time came up during the Vietnam era. My lottery number was 352. That will mean something to the older listeners of this video and not so much to the younger ones. Needless to say, my number was never called and I did not serve. I, of course, have many classmates and friends who claim veteran status as a result of the Vietnam conflict. I feel pretty certain I missed something in my life by not participating. Camaraderie, courage, incredible life experiences, and possibly not coming home. Such was my lot. I honor and am in awe of my veteran friends and the stories told this time of year, and in no small way thank them from the bottom of my heart for their service, sacrifice, and steadfastness in the face of all their challenges. Left-leaning or right, religious or atheist, young or old, our nation is here now because of the decisions our leaders have made, sometimes right, sometimes wrong, and the military in place to carry out those decisions. Since I feel incredibly blessed for the life I lead today, I'm eternally grateful to the men and women who protected my ability to live it the way I've wanted to. Somehow a simple, thank you for your service, doesn't seem enough. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.